trust together. The default for most programs when playing multimedia is for the audio and the video to be a certain amount out of sync. For the programs that actually work, the way they normally do it is by using very small audio buffers, only playing one video frame worth of audio at a time. This isn't always practical if you're doing a lot of audio processing and have varying amounts of latency. Sometimes you need bigger buffers, and that's where the synchronization becomes a problem. So with Sinalera, the usual way of synchronizing the audio in the video is just playing back a piece of video and listening to the audio synchronization, and then just going down to the nudge text boxes and wheeling up and down until the audio and the video look reasonably close. And once you have a value that seems to work, you just select it, control C, go to the playback preferences, and then go to the audio offset. Control V to paste it, and then erase what you had in the nudge text box. And then everything you play back from then on will use the same synchronization values. The problem with this method though, is to get the audio and the video synchronized this way, you need some kind of a transient in the video. Some videos just don't have a transient, so you can spend a lot of time looking. The next easiest method is to create a test synchronization file. And that's what we're going to do here today. All you need is to create one video track and one audio track. I want to set a reasonably high frame rate, like 30 frames per second, a reasonably high sample rate, like 48 kilohertz, and then select a low frame size so there's the least latency when playing back the video. We want the video playing some kind of a trigger. Attach the background effect. The background effect merely fills the video frame with a constant color. And then we want to fill the audio with a constant sound, so we attach the synthesizer. Then render this to a temporary file. Use a very accurate, uncompressed codec, so the video has the least amount of latency. For this, we'll just use JPEG. And then we'll use an uncompressed audio format, so the audio has the least amount of latency. Have it paste into the project when it's done. And now we have a video and an audio track with video and audio triggers that start at exactly the same time. Let's test the playback to make sure they play at the full frame rate. Now because this particular sound driver is already really tight with no synchronization offset, let's deliberately set it off. So assuming this is a sound driver that by default is way off, and we haven't just intentionally skewed it for demonstration, let's play back and see if the video and the audio start at the same time. As you can see, they're way off. So let's start tweaking the nudge text box until the two tracks are synchronized. Video might be slightly ahead now. Video is definitely ahead. That looked pretty close. Video is behind now. So we can say nudging the audio 0.2 seconds back in time gets them about as synchronized as a lion eye can get them. So let's go back to our playback preferences, reduce the audio offset by the amount we just nudged the tracks, which is minus 0.2 seconds, and then set the nudge boxes back to zero. And that was pretty much spot on. For any project you now play back in Sinalera, you'll have the same audio offset in your playback preferences, and they should all be synchronized as long as you use the same sound driver. If you change the sound driver, or if you change the buffer size, your synchronization will probably be off again. When you render a project, the rendered sound file ignores the playback preferences. You can always be sure if they sound synchronized, they'll be synchronized in the rendered file.